sorry, I'm sawing a staff card at the same time. Um, okay, look, what I want to know with this is, I remember we, we dealt with this when I was chairing strategy and planning, and in, in my heart of hearts, I've always actually felt that this is inevitable. The bylaw uh, bridge will be crossed at some point, and I just feel like we're treading water and we're seeing the same stuff again and again, and as you quite correctly say, the hotspots do move, and we've done that softly, softly approach um, for, for as long as I can remember, even before I was on council with Cramden Square. Mm -hmm. um, so how long does this sort of nonsensical water treating continue. What do you need from us to actually, what, as far as a resolution goes, to progress uh, investigating a bylaw? Do we just simply move option two, that, that we uh, ask staff to um, investigate uh, a bylaw under the Freedom of Camping Act 2011? And that's it. Is that what you need from us? I don't know if there'll be support for that, but that's where I'm at. Yes, that is what we would need. Um, between now and when we do the bylaw, the bylaw's going to take a lot of time, and that's why I'm worried about the staff resource that goes in. So maybe they're not park rangers, maybe they're just called coastal rangers or beach rangers, but I do think we need to think about a dedicated resource. Um, well, I, I mean, is that I, I just the answer I got back before said that park rangers don't, you know, they do parks and reserves. So can I just check who's doing the coastal? Areas and do would it be useful to have a dedicated resource? Um, we currently have a dedicated resource that we've been funding, and um, bearing in mind Freedom Camping actually, and we're seeing it already, the numbers drop as we head into the winter months and then start again. We'll probably um, get back into. We started in October this year. We think probably if we do it again, we'd start in uh, November, um, and uh, look to that part of that dedicated resource as part of our activity management plan for regulatory regulatory compliance was we would continue to fund that um, dedicated resource um, in the new LTP and just carry on with the work that we're doing. In the interim, we're working really closely with park rangers and um, our um, parking compliance team and our parking and uh, our compliance and enforcement team to manage um, as best we can freedom camping activities. Um. I'm sort of starting to waver on this in, in the direction of maybe a bylaw is the way to achieve what I want. Um, what There are two questions I, I need answers to to help me make a, a firmer decision on that. Um, the, the decision we'd be making today if we went with option two would be to ask you to investigate a bylaw. That doesn't mean that we will end up with a bylaw. There's another point along that decision-making continuum where we actually make that decision finally, isn't there? Yes. Once we've got that more information. Yes, we would have to bring to you all the information and the supporting documentation about whether you do or do not want to um, consult on a bylaw. Yep. And then my other concern is if we do go down the track of establishing a bylaw, what we're going to get is real difficulty establishing where the appropriate place for freedom camping is. Because, of course, anybody in the community where we say this is an appropriate place for freedom camping is likely to come back and say to us, well, not in my backyard. A little bit like you know, some of the other bylaws that we've had um, in the last couple of years. And I think that's probably some of the intents we, we, we'd have to move into pretty quickly around establishing the criteria for what makes an ideal camp, freedom camping site and then working on identifying what those potential sites are around this district and then doing consultation around those. So do you believe such places exist where we won't get huge amounts of negative community feedback? I Some do, yes. Yeah. Yeah. yes. And, um, I think there's, a, um, there's, market and there's market interest to actually um, be, uh, provide for this niche type market and, uh, and it's a matter of um, these sorts of things coming online and I, yeah, I do think there's going to be, it's going to be a combination of um, prohibited areas from council potentially if those are identified, um, some more restricted areas around where it can happen as it is currently and also relying on the um, market to actually bring some other legitimate camping um, environments for that. Can I just clarify, because Glenn's um, amendment makes it makes the point very clear. Option two is to develop a bylaw, but then in the... Um, so that's what... If we wanted to develop a bylaw, we go with option two. Can I just be clear? Can I just get some sort of read of the council so you know where you're debating from? Is that sensible? 
So can I have, so there's two choices as it seems to me. Option one is the non-bylaw approach. Option two is the bylaw approach. Bylaw, for 5.1.3 on 445, if the council was to make a bylaw under the Freedom Camping Act, outlining areas where freedom camping is prohibited or restricted, is that what the bylaw would be? Yes. Not a bylaw saying this is where you can. No, the bylaw can't, the freedom camping bylaw can't, it has to identify prohibited areas. Yeah. So if that's the case, I would. I would be happy to support a bylaw. Right. Okay. So is that everybody needs to be clear. Yeah. No. Yeah. Are we clear? Because all I want to do is get an indication. This is not a vote, but rather than have a debate for two hours, um, I just would really think it would be helpful. Is this going to contribute to that? I think we also need to carry on and still do right point one yeah, yeah, yeah. while we're doing that. Yeah, yeah. No, all of those tidy up things can be done, but I just really would be helpful, I think, for whoever's going to move amendments and things, just to get an indication of pe of where people are at. Could we possibly do two things? One, put up your hand in a minute if you are not in favour of a bylaw, and one if you are. Is that okay? Is that easy? So maybe we'll start it with the positive. So are you in favour of a bylaw? Could we raise our hands? Right, that's fairly compelling. <laughs> <laughs> Saves a lot of debate, doesn't it? So could we perhaps word something that took account of the feeling around the table um, that dealt with all those things? And have you got something, Glenn? Well, yeah, the amendment pretty much captures it, but I'd, I'd still like to make it more explicit where it says in option two, uh, so to investigate uh, developing a bylaw under the Freedom Camping Act 2011. It says uh, non-regulatory, we got that right? So, so let's just be really clear on it so we don't uh, yep. mince our words. Staff investigate the development of a... As it says on page of, at the top, 442. Bylaw to, what's the wording, Anne? To develop a bylaw under the Freedom Camping Act. Under the Freedom Camping Act. 2011. 2011. Eleven. Just right. pretty much a copy and paste of top of so, 442. Chris, um, we're doing, as a possible amendment, staff investigate the development of a bylaw under the Freedom Camping Act 2011 and report back to the Council in May 2015. Is that what you want to have happen? That's your proposed timeline? Right, so can we start with that? Is there anything um, anything else that people want to be in there? Uh, well, you've got to propose where it comes through. What, does, does any committee have freedom camping? Reagan consents. <laughs> oh, that's fair. <laughs> Yep, Andrew. I'm really keen, given that we've got different issues in different parts of the city, that community boards should have as strong an input into this process at every stage as possible. And I don't know whether we need to capture that in the resolution today, but certainly I know the issues along the eastern seaboard and on the peninsula are perhaps quite different mm -hmm. and more pronounced than yeah. in some other areas of the city. So I'd be very keen, particularly for the community boards in those affected areas, given that they're the people that really know the lie of the land locally, have as much input into every stage of this as, as possible. OK, so can we amend that then, perhaps, Chris, staff investigate the development of the bylaw under the Freedom Camping Act, um, as outlined in option two, um, and report back to the council via the Regulations and Consents Committee and the appropriate community boards, and Mike is getting upset. <laughs> Right, uh, OK, so... And I think, um, just bearing in mind Andrew's point and the amount of work required to... Because what, what you'll want us to do is come back with what's technically called a Section 155 report, which is actually the, the legal rationale for the bylaw and the consultation of the I think, actually, I would suspect we suggest we do that until June. June, so fine. I don't think anybody's... Yep, yeah, that's fine. You comfortable with that? Yeah. Are you comfortable with that? Yeah. Okay. Is there any other changes, amendments, Bill? It just seems we're 
that's potentially potentially some contradiction there. Yes, there is. I'm going to take 8.1 off. So, um, so take perhaps, out perhaps we take that off. Regulatory. Yeah, and we. It's a range of measures. Okay, yeah. So we start with this one, and then is, is there anything else you want to um, put in there? So we've involved the community boards. We've gone to the right committee, which turns out to be yours, Raf. <laughs> And um, is there anything else? Paul? Do yep. we need to investigate uh, ways of managing uh, the issue? Like if we could need to identify some sites where we can actually manage the issue and uh, the facilities around that, I think there needs to be some work there because it's a growing industry and it's not going away. And I just think whilst we're putting... Okay, suge it, suggest what you want up there. Well, I just think it, uh, there needs to be some investigation into alternative sites where these people can be located where it doesn't actually cause issues for the community. Yep. They are called campsites, but these people are... Yep. No, no, oh, let's not get into that. No, let's, no, no, we're not getting into that. So what do you want to move, Paul? That I just think we need to identify some sites where we can actually manage this, this, that, this issue. That the report um, look at some potential sites where yep. Freedom look, Camping is encouraged? I went up around the top of the South Island, Freedom Camping over the holidays. I'm assuming time. that there and are it, some. And, yep. So... so that, that report could include that. Is that okay with you guys? Right. Include sites which welcome Freedom Campers. Yeah? Okay, anything else we want to put in there? If not, mm. is there a seconder for this? Mm. Yep, full. Okay. Um, can I maybe put that? Okay, I'll put that. Those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Carried unanimously. Okay, that's uh, that. I'm assuming that was the motion, was it? Yes, I don't need to put anything else again. Or if it is um, developed, that comes back to council for approval. Mm -hmm. Does mm -hmm. it? Yep, it's outlined in the process, and it goes out for consultation and all sorts of stuff. I think. <laughs> okay, right. Um, moving on to item 28, which is a hefty little piece of work.